think what even our youngest kids and our youngest students are going to remember is how we react right. to this situation. They're not going to remember the specifics of the virus, mm -hmm. and, you know, but they're going, they look to us for mm -hmm. how to respond and how to feel. Uh, hi, this is Dr. Jeff from Newman Chiropractic. We've got Emily, our office manager, and Maureen from Maureen's Meals, my fiance, right? So, Maureen, you taught in the public school system, and now you teach at Endicott College for, give me a background in terms of education. Um, I taught public school for 15 years. 15 years? 15 years, and then I've been in higher education for the last three years. Okay, so, um, so one of the reasons we wanted to bring this up and talk to you about this is because a lot of people, right, I talk to my parents or even some other people, they're comparing this COVID-19 uh, virus to like the swine flu outbreak mm -hmm. or the H1N1 mm -hmm. outbreak and stuff like that. And you actually worked in the public school system during those times. And we just found out last Friday on the 13th of March that they're closing the public schools around here for mm -hmm. two weeks. Have you ever seen anything like this? Never. It Never? is completely unprecedented. I can remember when H1N1 and possibly the swine flu, but I don't remember the exact years of that. One of those I can remember being told as a classroom teacher to, um, you know, prepare days worth of sub plans, basically just in case we were out as teachers, so mm. that the if we were out for an extended period of time then the momentum of learning um, could continue. But there was never any discussion during that time about closing schools for <clears throat> so, at all, period. Yeah, Like I said, it's unprecedented. You were saying today, like, you, how long did you spend putting together plans for the kids? All day. All day. Well, there was okay. some cooking involved, <laughs> obviously, too. So, no, it was, I spent most of the afternoon. I probably spent four hours. For the kids, because you... Yeah, I only got one child. Though. One child. <laughs> but... What I'm trying to what I'm trying to get across is that you know the value of education. Yeah. You know how impactful this time off can be. So like that's, I that's think huge, for right? any student, it's going even sort of your traditional average students are going to be impacted by it because it's not just the two weeks off. It's now everything else has to be modified and changed for the rest of the year. So say they go back in two weeks, there's going to be changes, at least in Massachusetts, I'm sure, to um, MCAS and testing schedules, which is also going to push grade level instruction further away from those end of the year standards. And then they get to the next year. So everybody's going to enter the next grade level already behind so yeah. how do you compensate for that because mm -hmm. you can't guarantee that everybody's going to be doing things outside of the classroom mm -hmm. uh, with their students and that's for your typically developing average students who are probably expected to meet the standards by the end of the year anyway mm -hmm. then you factor in any student with a disability mental health concerns anxiety you know those are the things that we kind of talked about last yeah. night um, that are concerns that some students and some of our kids in particular really rely on that routine of learning mm -hmm. to build confidence and feel comfortable in a school setting and unfortunately we've had to take that away from them it's serious big deal mm -hmm. it's a big deal if mm -hmm. i had to guess i would say it's going to be more than two weeks yeah, yeah. I, really I would guess do. that too i worked in the school system for a brief time before i worked for dr jeff but you know i feel that any time off Mm -hmm. sets kids back right even mm -hmm. for even you know holiday breaks and you know you know um the vacations and things like that but then you add this like hysteria that people are feeling yeah. about yeah. this particular virus and like you know panic that we're seeing in the you know overwhelming sense mm -hmm. of none of us have ever been through this nobody knows how to handle it the kids are all feeling and seeing exactly. that from everybody which is yeah. only going to heighten in my opinion, the, you know, yeah. kind of detriment that they're going to end up yeah. going through. Absolutely. On top of losing that routine and structure of school. Yeah. I think families need to try to do whatever they can to establish some sort of routine, whatever yeah. that looks like for your family. Because as Emily said, I think what even our youngest kids and our youngest students are going to remember is how we react right. to this situation. They're not going to remember the specifics of the virus mm -hmm. and, you know, but they're going, they look to us mm -hmm. for how to respond and how to feel. So 
the more we can model that routine and model yeah. sort of a sense of calmness, even if we're not feeling calm, yeah. then, um, I think is really important. I would recommend that certainly establishing a new habit or system mm -hmm. as a parent, as hard as it can be, because it becomes stressful when you're trying to add new systems or habits into your own life. But whether it be when you get out of the shower or when you're done brushing your teeth or something, adding another habit such as this is educational time for the mm -hmm. kids, right? Uh, making sure that, I mean, I know that a lot of teachers are sending home their, what, what are the online to, uh, tools that they have, like a Moby Max or what, what are those? Yeah, things? there's, yeah. There's something like that. The unfortunate thing is it, is a lot of schools can't make it mandatory yeah because mm -hmm. again that gets to that sort of equitable access that we were talking about the mm -hmm. other day and you can't really have some schools continuing learning to push that and then other schools who are at a disadvantage not being able to do mm -hmm. that and i know my role sort of in this newman experience um is typically centered around food which we do have some suggestions yeah. for um but i really see myself sort of as like a first responder to our family's mm -hmm. overall overall well-being and at the moment you know that priority is on learning and trying to keep things as normal as possible for the kids but if I can be a resource to anybody who really wants um, you know to try to establish some sort of routine or just some great resources um, you know please reach out because I'm willing to um, support anybody in that way you know I'm working to set up right now um, an online book discussion platform that the boys yep. can talk to each other whether they're here oh, or at their cool. mom's that's cool. um, they can read to each other on it um, cool. so that's a free resource nice. a lot of the educational um, resources out there that are usually paid resources have actually opened themselves up to free access so that people yeah. can i've seen some, um, some articles about that yeah use them so you know reach out and i'm happy to design something specific that you feel like would benefit your child, you know. That'd be great. That's awesome. Awesome. Do that. Yeah, that's so helpful yeah. because I think, um, like you were saying, you know, you are s super fortunate and very knowledgeable because you have that education mm -hmm. background. And I think um, <laughs> the people that don't know where to start, right, exactly. it's very overwhelming anyway. And again, add what everybody else yeah. is feeling, you know, going on right now anyway. It's even more overwhelming. Yeah, almost to the point of, people may feel like it's not worth thinking about that right now because right. we're all thinking about this. I think it's going to be super helpful. <clears throat> you also are at Endicott. Yeah. What's your course that you teach at Endicott? Technology. Technology. And you also are a student teaching supervisor. I get that right, right? Mm -hmm. And you're able to see the generational differences between your student <laughs> teachers going into schools in terms of the ability to function with uh, technology, the ability not to, like... How many people out there realize or are misinformed on how much we are actually comfortable using technology to educate? We didn't prep me for this question. That's Jack for you. <laughs> That's okay. to be fair. I think just given the perspective that my sophomores come in with, yeah. um, you know, <clears throat> technology is not being utilized to its full potential in the education setting, and I think that's a reason. Also, there's the the equitable access, but. The system is not designed to provide widespread, re widespread remote learning to everybody. Yeah. We're just not equipped for it. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably after this, there's going to be a real push for that in schools. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's obviously too late to make it be advantageous for this situation. Yeah. But um, moving forward, I think it's going to be huge because there's going to be other things. Yeah. Right? So these college students, what are you gathering from them? The call, then you're not, so give us an idea. So Endicott is what in terms of school, no school? So spring break is next week and then they extended spring break an additional week, which is great for the students. Um, and it's supposed to be a time for faculty and staff to start pulling together and think essentially figuring out how are they going to deliver instruction remotely? Mm. Because then the following week, that first week of April, is remote instruction and again that's and how productive is that gonna be do you think to these parents that are a lot of them probably paying for their child's education I think everybody's gonna do the best that they can and it's gonna look different depending <clears throat> on your experience and I think the most important thing that people can do at this point is just to be understanding 
you know, and a few of my students said the other day, I'm paying for this, or my parents are paying for this, and it's, it's not anybody's intention mm -hmm. to, you know, ruin your college experience. Yep. Right. Um, so just trying to be understanding and, and make the most. Endicott in particular, I mean, I can only speak from that perspective, mm -hmm. is doing a, a nice job at least trying to pair uh, professors up with people who might have more experience with technology as sort of to serve as a mentor yep. um, so that they can help provide that support. Cool. That was a good Thanks. one. All right. No